Welcome back everyone. It's time to talk about another Android phone that came out many years ago and I guess we're just gonna go ahead and see if it's still worth it. Now this specific device is pretty interesting because it just got unsupported which is the original Google Pixel. This is the smaller variant. I'll take a you know I'll do another video about the bigger variant the Pixel XL but one thing that I liked about the Google Pixel was that I actually liked the Nexus lineup. You know I think that specific version and genre of phones was the best Android phones of that time. Unfortunately, it, end up, it did end off with the Nexus 5X and Nexus 6P, which I didn't think was the best ending point, but it is what it is. There's really nothing we can really do about it. But this original Google Pixel, it really didn't look the best, and I think it was a downgrade from the 5X and the 6P, but it definitely isn't uh, it is kind of ugly, I'll be completely honest, I hate to say it, but it's definitely not the best looking thing ever. If you get the black model, it looks a little bit better, but I think at the end of the day, this phone served a purpose, and the software was what made this phone beautiful, you know, and it's kind of like the standard saying, it's not about, or, it's not, it's not about what's, you know, the outside that matters, it's the inside or the ops, I don't really remember, but this phone was beautiful for everything inside of it for the most part. Now, I will leave this one link down in the description, but I'll also leave a couple other phones that I would also recommend this year. So check out those links in the description. You can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now this phone originally came out in 2016, so it's definitely not a new phone. It's turning five years old this year. And looking at it, you might assume that it is like a five-year-old device because, you know, it kind of is. There's some other phones that came out in 2016, 2017 that look far better than this, but it is what it is. It's really nothing we can really do about it. It has a five-inch AMOLED display on the front, and it's a full HD 1080p panel. And I think honestly the panel is one of its biggest assets. Everything surrounding the panel is really ugly, but the panel itself is actually pretty decent. So I will say benefit to you know Google the specific pixel for making this type of panel. And I think it's even really good nowadays too. Obviously it's not perfect because you do have quite a bit of bezel around it, but I think the panel itself is actually pretty decent for the most part. Now you have USB type C on the bottom, which is awesome. You have a headphone jack in this phone as well. Now on the back, you have the aluminum back slot slash glass on the top or slash glass on the, I can't even speak, where you have the fingerprint sensor in that glass portion up top. Now I think that's a really cool thing and I actually think this phone still feels extremely premium as strange that it is. I think this phone felt more premium than the Pixel 5 this year as well as the Pixel 4 from last year. You know, the aluminum build on this phone just feels so good and that's why this phone has held up so well. And I think this was probably the best built Google Pixel that's came out for the most part. You don't have any IP certification, but you do have some water repellent, which is cool. And I think one of the biggest downsides of this phone, in my opinion, were the storage models that this phone came out with because it had a base 32 gig model, but it had a top year 128 gig model. So I wish there was like some bigger model or a higher 64 gig model, but it is what it is. There's nothing we can really do about it. Now, moving on to the camera setup, you know, which is on top of that glass back on the back, which is like half the glass back. <laughs> You have a single 12.3 megapixel wide angle lens. And I think honestly, this was this phone's biggest asset at that time. I remember in 2016 and 2017, I think even maybe in 2018, the Pixel lineup of devices had the best cameras of that year. I think it was around the time the Pixel 4 came out that it kind of stopped getting that specific, you know, praise. But this phone still has a pretty good camera. It's not amazing, but it definitely has some features built in. You know, you can do 4K at 30 on it. It's a single lens, so you don't have any, you know, portrait mode or telephoto lens, but or ultra wide sensor for that matter, but it's still pretty good for the most part. And really whatever you're going to do with it, I think most people are going to be perfectly okay with it. I wish it did have a little bit more, you know, capability when it came down to the software or the, you know, camera lenses, but compared to even today's camera lenses, we still pretty much are only at that dual camera setup. You know, we have like the Pixel 5, even the Pixel 4a that just came out has a single camera lens. So I really don't think it's maybe that big of a deal just yet, even though it's a big of a deal to me, it may not be for a lot of people. Now the front camera may be the bigger problem. It's a single eight megapixel sensor. Most fan, you know, front cameras are single sensors. It can only shoot 1080p at videos, which at that time was perfectly fine, I think for the most part. But nowadays we have 4K on the front and that is definitely an emerging, you know, area where a lot of manufacturers are focusing more on. The back camera was kind of the, you know, the area where a lot of manufacturers wanted to perfect. And now we're at that stage where the front camera is kind of becoming like that. We have 4K at 60 on a lot of other phones out there. So 
with this one, only 1080p, you may have a bigger problem with the front camera than the back camera, but I think at the end of the day, the Pixel 1's camera is perfectly fine for a lot of people out there. So in terms of the camera setup, that pretty much covers it up. Now the software experience, this is probably the best advantage of owning a Pixel. The stock software on these phones is beautiful, and I think that's one of the biggest advantages for this phone. Unfortunately, it did stop getting updates on Android 10, which I think is okay. You know, I think Android 11 and all these other phone versions are going to be amazing, but I think Android 10 for the most part is a good stopping point for this phone. I, I wish it got more, but it does have quite a bit of custom ROM community behind it as well. So you can go ahead and root it. You can custom ROM it and do really whatever you want to. So that's another pretty big advantage that you have on a phone like this. So when you pick up the Google Pixel, you can expect to get pretty decent, you know, performance for the most part. It's definitely not going to be perfect in terms of the software, you know, experience, but but I think when it comes down to Android, it really doesn't get too much better than this besides Auction OS. So in terms of the software experience, that pretty much covers it up. Now performance wise, the Google Pixel 1 had the Qualcomm Snapdragon 821 chipset, a quad core CPU, an Adreno 530 GPU, and four gigabytes of RAM on every single model of the Pixel. You know, there were only two versions. Now what's funny about this device is that up until the Pixel 4, and I even think the Pixel 4a, all these phones have 4 gigs of RAM. Maybe the Pixel 4a has more, I don't really remember. But from the Pixel 1 to the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL, all those phones had 4, 4 gigs of RAM, which I think is okay because on a Google Pixel phone stock software, you don't need a crazy amount of RAM, but it would have been really nice had they followed the same thing what Samsung was doing and OnePlus was doing and just throwing a bunch of RAM on these devices. Again, there's nothing we can really do about it now. But what I can tell you is the Pixel is still actually a pretty good performing phone you know it's not on a super outdated version of software so i think that in and of itself is a pretty big advantage for this phone you're not going to pick it up and feel like you have a completely slow phone or a completely outdated phone it just kind of stopped getting updates you know that's one way to look at it so i think that in and of itself is another pretty big advantage of it now day-to-day -day tasks you're probably going to be perfectly fine with it as well all the apps are still up to date you're still getting updates in the app store and everything which is cool and i would definitely tell you from a day-to-day -day perspective you're not going to feel like you have a super slow phone i think and especially with the gesture based design that came out with android 10 this phone feels that much smoother and that much better for sure now there are some caveats at the end of the day i think the way this phone looks is a pretty big disadvantage because it just makes it feel that much older i really wish it didn't have this much bezel but there's nothing we can do about it you know it's already developed it's already been developed for so many years and I think anybody out there who's going to use this phone, the performance is not going to be one of those areas you're going to complain at unless you're expecting the best type of performance. Maybe the only area where the Pixel, you know, you're going to feel like you have a pretty outdated phone more than what it is, is probably in the RAM management. I feel like with the RAM management portion of these phones, when it has like four gigs of RAM, even though it's stock Android, a lot of, you know, apps and games are going to close that in the background. So that's one way to look at it. But I think at the end of the day, for a majority of people watching this video, you're probably going to pick up a Pixel and be perfectly fine with the performance. So in terms of the whole entire performance aspect, that really pretty much covers it up. Now ending it off with the battery life, this phone has a 2,770 mAh battery, which I think that is actually kind of a decent sized battery. It has degraded over time, so it's definitely not at that 2,770 for me. I think it's at like 2,500 probably or less than that. But I would definitely say this is a pretty average battery life. I wouldn't say this is perfect by any means. And I wouldn't say this is you know horrible. I would definitely put it somewhere down the road for sure. So to kind of sum up this video and to answer the question, is the Google Pixel 1 still worth it in 2021? Which kind of is funny because it's one on both, whatever. Let me go ahead and tell you some huge pros and some cons of this device. First of all, I think the panel of this phone is beautiful still. I think everything surrounding the panel is not that great. But I would definitely tell you the panel of this phone is good for the most part even in today's standards you have usb type c you have the headphone jack you have a pretty premium build quality i think this was one of the best built pixel phones for the most part and it definitely feels very premium in the hand you have the fingerprint sensor on the back a very good back camera the rear facing camera on this thing is beautiful for the most part and really as i said before anything you're going to do with this type of camera you're going to be perfectly fine with it's probably not going to blow anybody's socks off anymore but it still has a lot of capability for sure at the end of the day 
you just stopped getting software support. So it was supported for a very long time. You have custom ROM capability and rooting capability on this device as well, which is another huge asset for it. And I think the performance is actually pretty good. I don't think it's a slow performing phone. It may be a little glitchy here and here, but it's actually not a bad performing phone. But as I said before, it's definitely not perfect. And with a Google Pixel, I think the way this phone looks isn't necessarily the best. It does look kind of ugly if I'm being honest. I like the Google Pixels, but they definitely don't look perfect. And even though though it had software support for a while, it kind of stopped getting software support. So you're kind of outdated when it comes down to software already, but it lasted for a very long time. The battery life isn't necessarily the best either. I think it's pretty much a con, you know, I don't think it's that great anymore. And the front camera, I think is not that great either. If you're somebody who films a lot of videos on your front camera, it's definitely not going to give you the best experience ever. But I think even with the cons in mind, this is one of those phones that are outdated that I would probably recommend people to still pick up. I think it's still getting some security up it's here and here but as I said before and I keep saying here and here not here and there but still for the most part the custom ROM capability behind this phone if you know anything about modding or customizability of your you know phones out there I would highly recommend custom ROMing this phone for the most part so in terms of that that pretty much covers up the video I think I'll also leave in the description maybe like a Samsung Galaxy S10 a Google Pixel 4 maybe the Pixel 5 as well you can go ahead and pick up those phones in the description which I'll also recommend higher than this you can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time but that really Really pretty much covers it up. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section as well. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys can hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.